have uh, another guest here. So I'd like to invite now Mr. Anand Ahmed, international green building expert. Uh, I think uh, he has a contribution in the uh, green energy, especially in the garments industry, industry sector. Uh, please uh, end this. Thank you. Uh, thank you, organizers, to invite me. Uh, and I was uh, here from all morning listening to everybody uh, because the green building mix, renewable energy is a big part. So I wanted to learn, wanted to be up to date, which happened today. I learned a lot. Thank you for that. On the other hand, I'm a little bit outsider of solar industry, right? Consumer energy. And I listen to everybody and whoever here mostly involved in solar industry. So I think my perspective will help us to understand the other side of the coin. First of all, the good news is even without uh, all the complaint that we hear today about government policy and all that, we did a remarkable job at uh, home based solar, rooftop solar for the villages. Why that happened? With all those people, it's not that literate. But we make a record. It's a one record, 6 million rooftop solar, Bangladesh number one on that sector. That means the necessity of the people has met. So people took it over. So what I find in a consumer end, especially with this uh, industrial lift of solar section that I'm working with, information gap is huge. All the people that we work in the solar industry, I think fail to convince us as an industry owner that it will be a profitable venture. Because I'm a businessman, I like to do business, so I need to know is this business going to be profitable for me? And the lasting of the solar, we say 25 years, warranty, guarantee, but there is no, not much maintenance plan is out there. Not much training of the project team is not out there. Why I'm saying that, I started this green building journey 10 years, 11 years back, come from Canada, it was hard for me, it was not easy. Because green building, what is green building? How many plants I have to put? What is the color I have to put on the wall to make it green building, right? And even today I heard from some of the uh, panelists that green building may cost more. But I can tell you as an expert, green building does not cost more, it costs less. And if it is cost less, why not you do it? We know the problem, we know the climate change, we know the uh, global warming, and we are contributing to that global warming every day. So it is our moral obligation to understand how I can contribute less, right? Good news is today, like you all also hear, so many uh, factory is going away. Not because they want the certificate. Now they understand going green will help them to save energy, right? How much energy they can save? I can tell you, any project or any building in a normally run project, if they go through the process of green building, they can save up to 25% of their energy. That means they're wasting 25% of their energy. So we have to communicate that with the people that you are wasting there. Factory owners, and we did that. I'm now consulting almost 260 projects. That means I able to convince 260 factory owners that it is good for you. Why am I telling you this? Solar people have to make this to the people. Even when I, because every green building that I have, I need a solar on the rooftop. Okay, and I tell you there's another benefit of the solar. We heard about the energy part. But there's another two significant benefit of the solar. One is called heat and effect reduction. If you put solar on the rooftop, that building, that floor, if it's a top floor, or if it's a shed building, will be have at least three to four degree less hot heat because it will reduce it. And if you have the solar on the rooftop, the heat and effect that around the solar, the heat will not emit from the rooftop, but the 
overall lab temperature of the area will be reduced. Right? And you're saving energy. Top of that, like now I'm working with Walton, you know, the Walton is going big and we already have 2.16 megawatt solar top of the project that I'm doing and we are planning another 3 megawatt top of that. So we convince them, we convince Walton to do it. Now they want to put solar on their street, the pathway. And you can also know that. So when you can convince the businessman, the business part of the solar, forget about the moral part and all others, they'll go for it. And my understanding solar ROI, even if we calculate that based on the REV price, electricity price, is five years. Simple. And it's a five years ROI investment, anybody wants to do that. Any businessman wants to do that. It's all the factory, when they invest, they think that they'll make break even in 10 years. But what happened? Information gap. We are unable to communicate that in a meaningful way with data to the owner. Forget about the policy, that's other, other, other part of it, we need that. But with the good information, you should able to convince the businessman that this is going to be a good business. And it's happening, it's happening. So that's the good part. Another thing is about especially the R&D sector, all the buyers, they are going to ESG, right? You know the terms ESG, environment, social, and governance. What is ESG? Reduce your carbon emission. Simple. Even today, I got two calls from two uh, garments owner. Uh, I went there for years back. They don't want to go for green building. Now they want to. Because their buyers say, as a supply chain, we are following ESG, so as in my supply chain, you have to follow ESG guide. So, reduce your carbon emission. Not only that, some of the buyer now put a condition that by 2024, you have to have your carbon footprint calculated for your product. So we can declare it. So the carbon footprint of any garments product or any other product will be compared with other product for consumer choice, which is the less carbon footprint product. That's a good news for solar. Because as soon as they try to save energy and they can mix with that carbon emission reduction with that solar, it's coming. Even though the policy is not going to change or nothing, solar is going to be booming no matter what. So that's the good news. If we compare our situation, um, say five, seven, eight years back, has to change. And like Sir said, said that parity with the electricity from the grid, we are there. But one note is here that RNG sector is running with mostly gas. And their cost of the unit of four to five taka. So if we think of four to five taka as uh, unit price, and uh, our price is a little bit more, we, if we can price it by 25 years, it's less. But if I talk about five years, it's more. Right? It is competing with REV price, eight, nine taka, very well, solar, but still not competing with the gas price. But the gas price will go up, go up, and then and then and our prices go down, so we'll grow. The final thing I want to just say before I give it out, talk about solution. Don't try to sell solar. What I missed today, I didn't I didn't hear the solution part of it. I only hear how you can sell more solar. That is like the objective. But no, become the solution. Like in deep building, we say it differently. We say that it is easier to save one kilowatt than to make it or generate it, right? And we have to save. We have to teach people that they have to become morally obligated to reduce their consumption. What is not needed? All we ask to reduce the waste. What is your wasting? Don't do it. And then Another chance is coming, which is good news for you, is from net zero. Net zero is going to be a big time in the next five years. Okay, we are working with five different uh, projects that I have going net zero, often is one of them. So net zero means what? First, they have to do everything they can do to reduce their energy consumption. And then, rest of the energy they need have to get it from the solar. Or, they have to get it from the solar certificate. 
uh, carbon uh, circuit. So to call them net zero. And this net zero is going to go to their ESG report. Because so many companies already start producing ESG, sustainable report at, uh, based on ZRI. So they're also going to ask for this uh, solar things from them. So we have to be ready as a uh, industry to inform people with more data, more analysis, and more comprehensive solution, not to sell, right? And after sales service is a big thing because nobody know how to manage solar system. It's a power plant. Even it's a hundred kilowatt itself is a power plant. You have to manage it. You have to nurture it. You have to keep it running. You have to know when it's not working, right? I went to the project. Oh, I put solar doesn't work. It's dusty. Nobody even ever sweep it. And we're so dusty country. And if you don't sweep the solar panel in two days, it will be dust. It will not produce a sub or if there's a break on the roof. We go down now. Fifty percent. But we are not teaching that. Even the recently I bought solar from somebody, I'm not gonna say name. They didn't teach my project in anything. They put the solar, I bought the solar, they got the LC is done, election is done, they can't. Who's gonna manage the solar? Even how you clean the solar is need to be understood. Because if you scratch it, it's not gonna work properly. Right? So all I'm saying that opportunity is the sky limit is there for us. But we have to be proactive. Of course, uh, Dada and others will try to do the policy level, but what I can do, what I can influence, I can give information to people, I can convince them with data, factual data, transparent data, right? I can help them to solve their problem, and then I will be in their side when they need to manage the system. I think with this, we can do very well. And again, thank you very much to uh, uh, invite me as an outsider. Thank you. I think this is the best contribution of the whole day because we are we are very addicted to solar. We are always talking about the end type, uh, solar type, but actually utilization is very important. Building confidence in the consumers level, industry level, uh, entrepreneurial level is very important. So I think uh, this is a wonderful job on and have a brainstorm in the future how to uh, develop a strategy to convince the people. If you convince uh, 100 government sooner, they can also influence government because they are much more involved with the government policy making. If you have uh, three questions from the uh, audience, distinguished audience, we would like to share our uh, new thought also. 1500 megawatt of solar all of a sudden. Uh, coming to the grid or beyond that, then the grid may not be there to accept the uh, uh, receiver. I just want to make one comment on uh, his uh, point. Uh, what we are doing right now, we are uh, putting, uh, it's called demand response system manually. What we are doing. Okay, we shut down this area today. We shut down that area tomorrow. We shut down that area day after tomorrow. And we're distributing the energy. Accordingly, and you also do the load shedding by schedule. It's called manual inverter system, right? So even if we have so much solar that we don't get, no, for example, the same, the, the, the shut down few things, gas, right? Gas you can shut down. We can save the fossil fuel part and let the uh, renewable part run it. And I think uh, to come to that point that uh, the grid cannot take the renewable energy, I think we are not there yet. We are not there yet. We will be, do, it will take another few years, you know, uh, to go there. So let's not go there and I think we can solve you know, issues within that right now. Once we go to the entrepreneur or the government sector, as, as they say, he said, oh, it is not working, but due to prior, prior regulations, maybe it, 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 you can install. Actually, they, their mind must set up, yes, yes, the solar is working. It's really needed. So my question is to you and all of you, people, people are also there. He is he's struggling a lot, I, I know, I know personally. So though you are the pioneer of the solar industry, do you have any plan to work together, who are working, to partner with the government, how we can reduce, how we can sustain 
আমি একদম ত্রিশ সেকেন্ডে শেষ করব সোনার ইন্ডাস্ট্রির জন্য কথা সূত্র ধরে কোম্পানি <laughs> I have sometimes struggled to find the right one, right? So that we can control, that's number one. Again, I go back to his comment and Sarah comment that in the village, we do rooftop solar five plus six million, right? How we did that? We went to them. You guys have to went to the client and convince them. Make client raise the voice of the cost of the solar, not you. You understand? They will raise the voice, they will tell the government, okay, reduce it. But they don't know now. Now they know solar doesn't work. What happened with the solar in Bangladesh? Desco uh, said that we need two percent solar to give you the uh, connected connections, right? So I I bought two percent solar only the panel, take some pictures, give it to them, or I put it on and then take it off. Or I put it on and I forget all about it because I get the connection. He didn't tell me how it works. He didn't teach me. He didn't monitor me, right? If you make say five projects successful, that five projects bring you ten projects. Forget the bigger ideas. How I can tell you from my experience? How 250 plus project now going green with me? Right? Because one person tells the others. And I have this all issues that you have. Right? All I can say, do what you can control right first. And then push for the next founder. Thank you.